For the feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary is taken from the book of Judith. The Lord hath blessed thee by his power, because by thee he hath brought our enemies to naught. Blessed art thou, O daughter, by the Lord the Most High God, above all women upon the earth. Blessed be the Lord who made heaven and earth, who hath directed thee to the cutting off the head of the prince of our enemies, because he hath so magnified thy name this day, that thy praise shall not depart out of the mouth of men, who shall be mindful of the power of the Lord forever, for that thou hast not spared thy life, by reason of the distress and tribulation of thy people, but hast prevented our ruin in the presence of our God. Thou art the glory of Jerusalem, thou art the joy of Israel, thou art the honor of our people. And the gospel for today is taken from the gospel of St. Luke. At that time, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed art thou that hast believed, because those things shall be accomplished that were spoken to thee by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, because he that is mighty hath done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is from generation unto generations to them that fear him. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today there's a bit of a debate about where the Blessed Virgin Mary was buried after she died. And there are many today who think that she died in Jerusalem, but there are others who think that she passed away at Ephesus. But when we look at tradition, it seems that there's really, there's really no doubt about where this happened. First, we have the monument that's in Jerusalem, and it's the Church of the Tomb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And this is a crusader church, like many of the monuments in Jerusalem are. It's, it's interesting to think uh, what would have happened to all of these monuments and all of the the holy sites in Jerusalem, if the Crusaders didn't do what they did. I think the Crusaders get a very bad name, but there's a lot of, of good that came from their, their battles in, in the East. Now the facade of this church is from the 12th century, and the church itself is in the shape of a cross, and it's in the Valley of Kidron, which is very close to the Garden of Gethsemane. And as you enter the doors of this church, you actually go down. So you, you, you descend down a flight of steps. And as you come to the main level of the church, which is significantly lower than the ground, there's a bunch of, of votive candles that are hanging from the ceiling. And you come to an altar that's in front of a sarcophagus that's cut out of a rock. And this is venerated as the tomb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And there, there are many peop people that uh, slip pieces of paper with their intentions on it over the, the plexiglass that covers this sarcophagus. Now, there's a Franciscan friar that did some excavations around this church, and he found some evidence of, of a very ancient cemetery that goes all the way back to the first century. And this Francis Franciscan friar died in 1972. 
And it's, it's apparent also that a church was built in the shape of an octagon right over the site of this sarcophagus in the 5th century. So very early on in the church, this spot was venerated. That octagonal church was destroyed in the 6th century, and the Crusaders, as I said, they rebuilt it in the 12th century. So, so this tomb that we find, it's a part of what are called the monumenta. And these are, are archaeological witnesses to tradition and to the teachings of the faith. Another example of a monumenta would be the tomb of St. Peter that's in Rome. It shows that St. Peter died and was buried in Rome. Now, next we also have some very early writings that tell us that the Blessed Virgin Mary died, in fact, in Jerusalem. And actually, all of the early writings that talk about the death of the Blessed Virgin Mary, they say that she died in Jerusalem. There are a few documents that come, say, in 1200 and 1300 that say something different. But again, the writings from the 2nd century and the 3rd century point to the fact that she died in Jerusalem, very close to the Garden of Gethsemane. So we, we see that there are, are certain writings from the early centuries that are, of course, canonical. They're a part of the scriptures. They were composed by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, and there's absolutely no error whatsoever in them, and every single word in them is true. There are other writings from the early centuries that are from the fathers of the church. So these are the men that came right after the apostles and they were saints and their writings are very important and they have the approval of the church and they're a source of our, of our doctrine. And then after this, we have what are called the Apocrypha. And these writings, they, they, they come from the early centuries but they're not as trustworthy. There are some, some things in these writings that are, are obviously false. But this doesn't mean that everything in the Apocrypha is false. There are some true things in them that come from tradition, and there are some things in them that are false. So again, some of these Apocrypha come from the 100s and the 200s, and all of them mention that the Blessed Virgin Mary died in Jerusalem. And lastly, we have the mystics of the church. There's a whole group of them. And these are the holy saints of the church who had visions of the life of Christ and also visit visions of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I'll just take one example. Mary of Agrita tells us that the Blessed Virgin Mary died in Jerusalem. So even if there's a debate about this today, just like there's a debate about everything, it seems that everything's up in the air, we actually know for a fact that the Blessed Virgin Mary, she died in Jerusalem. And if the tomb of the Blessed Virgin Mary is in Jerusalem, in the place that we're talking about, this means that this place where she was buried was the place where she was assumed into heaven as well. So this is the place that we should look to today when we celebrate this huge and important feast. The Immaculate Mother of God, the Ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. So this is one of the dogmas of the faith that has been defined by the Pope ex cathedra and so it must be believed by every Catholic and of course it's a, a source of joy for all true Catholics. Under the cross our Blessed Mother shared in all of the sufferings of her Divine Son and so she merited to be raised body and soul into heaven with him. So now at this point the Son sits at the right hand of the Father, and we can say also that Mary sits at the right hand of the Son. And even if it's impossible to imagine how this happened, the saints of the church have given us some idea of what occurred 
on the day of the Assumption. And today I'd just like to read a bit from Mary of Agrita, whose writings have the approval of more popes than I can even list for you today. Then from the sepulchre was started a most solemn procession moving with celestial music through the regions of the air and toward the Empyrean heaven. This happened in the hour immediately after midnight in which also the Lord had, ri had risen from the grave. And therefore not all of the apostles were witnesses of this prodigy but only some of them who were present and watching at the sepulchre. The saints and angels entered heaven in the order in which they had started, and in the last place came Christ our Savior, and at his right hand the Queen, clothed in the glory, in the, clothed in the gold of variety, as David says in Psalm 44. And so beautiful was she that she was the admiration of the entire heavenly court. All of them turned toward her to look upon her and bless her with new jubilee and songs of praise. May our Queen, who was assumed into heaven, watch over all of us today and give each of us much joy. May God bless you and a very happy feast day to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.